Alright, so good to be back and welcome back to my channel. My name is Satsin. In today's video, we're going to look at how we can render dynamic content using plain JavaScript. Of course, when you use frameworks like React, it's quite easy and straightforward to render dynamic content. But it's not so obvious when you're using plain JavaScript. And so that's what I'm going to show you today. And so our application is going to look like this. We're going to have user information, which is a heading, an H3 heading. And then we have a number of cards right here for a number of users and this by the way is dynamic content which is coming from this api right here json placeholder dot org the first thing we need to do of course can create a wireframe something like this so i have a section up here this is uh, the section which is going to contain the heading and then we have another section here which is going to contain the card itself and inside the card we're going to have two elements we're going to have the name and the email so i'm going to create a new project let me go to my project right here and i'm going to create a new folder so new folder rendering just double click to open this We're going to right click and then go and show more options and then open with code this option right here if you cannot see this option you can just say open in terminal open in terminal and then you can write code space dot and then hit enter and this is going to open in visual studio code and so we have a project right here and you can see our project right here is called rendering the first thing we need to do is to create the structure of the project so i'm going to create an html file so i'm going to say index.html and open that i'm going to generate boilerplate code so i just go for the exclamation point and then hit enter you can see right here so i'm going to change the title here to rendering right here and then inside this, if I'm, I'm to look at my wireframe, we have two sections. So I'm going to have two sections. Section dot header. This is going to have a class called the header. You can see it generates that. And then I'm going to have an H3 in there, which is going to say user information like that. Section dot container, because it's going to have a class called container. And inside this section, we're going to have a card so i'm going to say dot card that class and then inside the card i'm going to have two uh, elements so if you look at this wireframe right here first up we have this thing outside right which is our container and then we have this thing which is our card and inside our card we have two elements which is the name and the email so i'm going to say name and then dot email so for now i'm going to place uh, my name in here and then the, my email right here setson at email.com like that if i save this let me right click and open this with live server if you cannot see this option right here you can go to your extensions and you want to search for an extension called live server right. this extension right here you can install this and you can then you can render your page in, in a web browser. So open with live server. So this, if I open that, it will take me to this here. So this is what we have. So far we have user information and we have our card right here. Of course we haven't styled it. And so it's looking just plain. We need to style this. For us to style this, we need to link our CSS right here. So I'm going to say link CSS and it's going to be called style.css you can see here otherwise you can just change this name to whatever name you want so here i'm going to create another file this is going to be a css file with this name here style.css so i'm going to say style.css right here all right so we need to center this h3 right here to center that we select the class and then the h3 so you can say dot header dot by the way this is how you select a class and it has a child of an h3 heading and then we can say text align and then we can center that if i'm to save and check you can see now our heading is center aligned so that's what we want we need our cards to be of display flex so they should be flexible so i'm going to select this container right here so i'll say dot container and that container should be display flex and flex wrap it should be off wrap by default it's no wrap so um, i'm making it to wrap 
around uh, if we have a lot of elements in, in one line. So it will wrap to the next row. Uh, and so uh, nothing will change here because we don't have a lot of elements. We want to style this card right here. So we're going to select that. To select that, we say dot container. And then the child is the card. And we're going to give it a border. So we say border. And then we're going to give it a border of one pixel. And then that border is going to be solid and it's going to be black. So hash one, two, three, which is the colorful black. So if I save and get back, you can see now it has a border. The card is a border. We need to put some padding on this. And so we can say padding. I'm going to put a padding of 10 pixels. So if I save and check that out, you can see right there. I'm going to go back to my structure here. I'm going to duplicate this card right here, control C, and then paste it, control V, inside the same container right here. I want to see how it looks. So we need to put some space between these two cards. And so for us to do that, we need to go to the parent, which is this container, a gap of 10 pixels. I think it's okay. So if I save that and come back here, you can see now we have a gap right here. Okay, things that I did here. We only need to, to remain with one card. That's okay. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to create our script because most of the work is going to be done in JavaScript. And so we need to reference our script up here. So I'm going to say script src, script dot js like that. I'm going to defer this script right here. So we don't want this script to run before we load the content on the page. It defers this until the whole document is loaded. Yeah, we need to create this script right here. So up here, I'm going to say script dot js, which is a JavaScript file. So inside here, the stuff that we're going to render is coming from this page right here, which is our JSON placeholder.org. And we're going to render users right here. So I'm going to use this thing right here, this endpoint. So let me copy this endpoint, which is uh, for users. And in my JavaScript file, I'm going to use the fetch API. And this is a, a JavaScript fetch API. And then I'm going to paste that endpoint right here. And uh, it returns a promise. And so you can say dot then right here. And from that response, you can then convert that response into JSON like this. And then I touch another dot then right here. And then you get the actual data from this thing right here. So I'm going to console log the data that I'm getting from here. Of course, here you can also attach a dot catch right here uh, to catch any errors. So you can say error. And then you can console.error. There's an error method for the console as well right here. So let's check out this. If I'm going to save that and go back here, and then I'm going to inspect my page. I'm going to look at my console right here and see whether I have data. You can see we have the data coming from that API, which we are logging to the console right here. So this is working. We're getting a list of users. So let's check out the list of users. So they have a first name and an email. That's what we're going to get and put it inside this card right here. We want to get this John, Jane, Bob, Emily, William, etc. all these names. We want to dynamically render this content on this page right here using our JavaScript. For us to be able to dynamically render this right here, we need an element inside our HTML. And that element is called template right here. The information inside this template is not going to show on the web page. So I'm going to copy this right here, cut that, and then I'm going to place it inside this template right here. So you have to place this, whatever you want to render, you place it inside this template tag. And so if I'm to save this and go back to that page, you can see we have nothing here on the page, but we have the template right here. We have this div, it's not showing up, this card, this thing, it's not showing up. That's what this template does. This template will hide whatever you put inside it. It won't show on the page. Okay, so let's see how we can use this to our own advantage. And so I'm going to give this a class of data template 
you can name it whatever you want this uh, class right here i'm putting a class here so that we can select this in our javascript all right so let's get into our javascript we need to select this template right here and then we clone it we clone whatever child it has here's a child of this card this is the one that we want to clone so inside here we want to grab this template here we called it data template right so i'm going to say const data template and we're going to use document dot query selector and we reference the class name for us to get that so it's dot data template so it's going to be quotation dot data dash template okay we can have a look at this by logging it to the console this data template and see what is inside there so let me save this and go back to the browser you can see what we have here we have that template right here the next thing we need to do is we need to create a card inside this right here after we get our data we create a card for each element of our data and then we put the data in the element that we're going to create so i am going to remove this these were placeholders by the way now we're going to replace these with the actual data from our api so what we can do is inside here i'm going to put curly brackets and move this to the next line like this we're going to say data dot for each or we can map this let me map this uh, for each and map uh, they are almost the same because they iterate through the data but there's a difference map will return some value but for each would not return any value so here the map and i can say what we're getting back is our user right we're getting users and for those users we want to do something we're going to say const card we're going to create a, a card for each user so how do we get that card we need to get it from this data template that's why we had to create this data template so we can say data template and then we say dot content we want the content of this thing and we after we get the content we're going to clone that node and and we set it to true obviously here and then we then say dot children and then we need the first child of this thing um of course you might be confused what's going on here let me let me show you something here before i append that dot children let me console log this card so let's see what we're getting here so let's go and check this out you can see what we're getting here i love document fragments so what we're trying to get is not this document fragment we're trying to get this card right here this div right here so for us to get that div that's where we need to append that dot children we're saying get the children of this and get the first child so if i'm to save now and and go back you can see now we're getting the div right this div right here after we get this div get the elements that are inside this div here what we're trying to get is this name here and the email so they have a class of name and email so we can say const name and then we can use the card to query select tool and the class is name and we can do the same and let me just copy this and paste it right here so we're doing the same for the email so here is going to be email and the name as well is going to be email all right so you you can check out this by logging them to the console you can say console log the name call my email let's see what we are getting from these two so if i'm to save and check this out you can see we're getting the div with the class name and the div with the class email for each user because we are here we are mapping from the data that we're getting here so for each user that's why we're getting plenty of these things right here so we can say name dot text content and we can set that to the user first name you can see the users right here i want to grab this first name is equals to user dot first name and the same is email dot text content is equals user dot email this we can console log to see what we're getting from this name or my 
my email. Let's see what we have. If I save this and then check this out, you can see now we have the names and the email because we changed the text content right here. All right, so for us to display that in uh, on the page now, we need to select this container and then append this list right here. We append this card here because that's where we're getting the information. So I'm going to say const container document dot query select tool and it's a class container like that so once we have this container we can grab that container down here and say container dot append and we can append the card just like that all right, so if I save this with our fingers crossed, I'm sure that information is now showing on our web page. So let's check it out. You can see all the names are showing right here. So we have our cards right here and you can see it's not lining up properly here. So the only thing we need to do is in our styles right here, we need to set the card, each card to a flex of one right here so if i save that and come back here you can see now it's at least aligning and we have successfully rendered this content which is dynamic content using plain javascript you can see right here right that, that's all to it that's what it takes for you to render that content dynamic content using plain javascript all right so i hope this is helpful if you find this video helpful leave a like leave a comment consider subscribing to this channel i hope to see you in my next tutorial for now i'm out cheers